All right, guys, the next guest traveled all the way to Sydney and Mayweight as the backup for Adesanya Strickland at UFC 293, the number four ranked middleweight in the UFC. And fighting on December 2nd against Roman Dalidze, the killer gorilla himself, Jared Kinnear. Man, this has been this has been a minute. We're super excited to welcome you back to Submission Radio, man. Welcome back to the show. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, it has been quite a it's been a long minute. Uh <laughs> But yeah, uh, we're back. Uh, back. Thank you for guys for having me again. Uh, we made it. Uh, you know, considering the uh, the uh, what's the word? Uh, all the distance. You know, the distance between us. You know, like you guys said, it's early in the morning over there. It's uh, <laughs> shit. It's like twelve o'clock over here. So it's well. You you asked us before we started what time it was, and uh, yeah, we told you it's six a.m. This is this is the submission rate of life, man. So. It was, but it was good yeah. seeing you in Sydney, though, man. It was good seeing you in Sydney. You were there, ready to make weight, ready to fight and stuff. So it's it's good to be chatting again. Um, a lot has changed since we saw each other in Sydney. Dude, we're fresh off UFC 294. Your division, a lot happening. I have to ask you, man, right off the top, what did you think of um, Hamza Shamayev's win over Kamar Usman just, what, barely 24 hours ago? Yeah. Well, uh what can what else can I say? It was Hamza Hamza Shemaev as advertised. You know, he came out in that first round uh, at a pace that hardly anybody could keep up with. You know, and uh, you know, almost uh, you know was looking for that rear naked choke and everything. It was all over uh, Usman's back, and but Usman looked like a damn gorilla defending that rear naked choke. We had his knuckles on on the mat, dude, wrapping his hand around <laughs> his neck, and realized that there's nothing there. I thought that was pretty interesting to see. Uh, so, yeah, I saw a little gorilla in Usman, like, just sitting there with the dude on his back trying to chuck him out, but he just sitting there with his hands on his mat, on the mat, uh, holding his ground like that. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> well, we, second, we, sorry, go on, Jared. Yeah, but as the fight went on, though, you know, things slowed down in that second and third round. Uh, Hamza took, took his foot off the gas, and I'm sure we all learned that uh, he said he injured his hand uh, at the end of that first round. So, mm. um We'll see if it comes back broken or if it's just, you know, uh, I've injured my hand in, in a fight. I've broken my hand in a fight. Um, we all know what happened last time I was in Abu Dhabi. I got this mm. nice little uh, scar uh, last time I, I was in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's not fun fight with injuries, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, he he stuck it out, you know, uh, and got the win. Majority decision. Uh, no, was it a majority decision? It was a majority decision, so, yeah. You know, barely got the win. Anything, anything big that you learned as obviously a fellow middleweight, a guy who, you know, you might be fighting him one day, anything that you learned or picked up on, it was like, all right, cool. Because I feel like with Hamza, it's still, it's still almost early days, right? There's still so many questions. People still want to see um, a lot of things about him. Anything that you learned or picked up on? Um, just something I already knew. You can't really try to avoid his grappling. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people, when he shoots, people try to get their hips back and He's really good at shooting low. I mean, if he can't get to your hips, he'll continue until he gets to your ankle. And then his, his ability to climb from a, a low single or uh, to a uh, to the hips, switching off from a single to a double, and then finishing the takedown was beautiful. I saw him do that, especially against a high level wrestler, uh, former champion and and uh, future Hall of Famer, and um, Usman. Mm. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool to see his wrestling on display. Um, but uh, you know, <clears throat> this is something I've I've already known, uh, learned through my throughout my career that you can't really defend a wrestler by trying to avoid those wrestling exchanges. Now I understand in MMA you want to keep it on the feed and try not to engage in those situations, but um, when you got a wrestler that good, you know who's that dedicated to his craft and who's going to get on you eventually, he's going to make contact with you. Uh, it comes to a point to where you're going to have to start engaging with him you know so um i don't want to say too much and get and yeah sure yeah, yeah but uh <laughs> oh yeah i saw some things and uh it's not nothing with him in particular it's just wrestling in general you know so uh yeah that's pretty much all i want to say about what i saw but um <laughs> he looked good both of, both competitors look really good you know what i mean mm. um i thought uh i thought the fight went how i thought it was gonna go um outside of uh Shamayev injuring his hand um but i thought we we're gonna see him come out hot and heavy if not get that finish in the first round maybe uh start to slow down a little bit same thing we saw in the 
in the Gilbert Burns fight, you know. Mm-hmm. So I thought we, I thought it, while the fight was playing out, I thought we were seeing that all over again, and uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of other people watching that were, you know, had their opinions uh, live. But um, yeah, you know, um, good again. It was good, good again to watch, watch these guys work, and uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, what you're talking about reactions, we saw, you know, Conor McGregor said on Twitter or X or whatever they call it these days, whatever Elon Musk wants to put it as, um, he said, you know, he li- he'd like to see Hamzad g- fight again in the middleweight division before getting the title shot, uh, ideally against maybe the Polo Costa fight getting rebooked. How do you feel, man? Like, y- you're in a bit of a, you're involved in this situation, right? Because you're after the title shot yourself, hopefully after a win over Roman. Do you... Do you think he, uh, from your perspective, do you think he deserves this title shot after this win over Kamaru? Would you like yeah. to see him ideally fight again? Do you think this Polo for Costa fight should be rebooked? Yeah. Your, well, I your... feel like I'm more involved in this title picture than most people will, will want to acknowledge. Um, uh, when I beat, uh, what you call it? What's his name? Sean Strickland. Uh, Marvin Vittori. Oh, sorry, Marvin. Yeah, yeah. Um, after, when I beat Marvin Vittori, after I beat the current champion, you know, uh, I feel like I was right there at the doorstep, if anything, considering that Sean had just uh, won, uh, you know, de- dethroned Adesanya. And especially in in retro, in hindsight now, considering that Adesanya doesn't plan on coming back anytime soon. Um, and uh, there are mixed feelings on Drake as being the c- next contender. So, it feels like everybody was scratching and clawing to find a contender when I'm just sitting, when I'm, you know, sitting right here, I just broke a record. And, and so, yeah. Um, how do I feel about Hamza in his position? Um, congratulations on his acquisition of his shot. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, we all, it is what it is, I guess, you know, um, how do I, do I think he deserves a title shot? I feel like you got to fight middleweights to fight for the middleweight title. And he has yet to fight a middleweight in in the last couple of years. He hasn't even fought a ranked middleweight. Don't want to take anything away from Usman. Don't think I'm not saying that Usman can't come up here and do his thing in middleweight. But um that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. That hasn't been. Usman has a fought a middleweight. So uh Shamar didn't fight a middleweight. So he doesn't really get a middleweight title. You know, that's just that's common sense, you know, but um there's there's that entertainment aspect of this thing that nobody wants to talk about, but it's obviously there, you know. So and that's been pulling a lot of these strings. So we need to uh pull the skirt down in this thing and, <laughs> and call it what it is, you know what I mean? Mm. Um <clears throat> that's all it is. Uh Shamav isn't the best in the world. He's he's only as good as, as the night he's fighting. He's only he's only better than the guy he's fighting. You know, um, and I'm sure he would disagree with me if he were to ask, if he were to, if you were to ask him or maybe not, I'm, um, I don't know. They asked him something similar, like that, similar leading up to this fight and he wanted to reserve his, 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 uh, reserve his answer. But, um, I feel like I'm the best in the world. I feel like I can beat any and all these guys. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, you know, I got the call to step in to fight Usman or fight Shemaya. But uh, unfortunately, um, before I could tell my manager to tell the UFC yes, I had injured myself. So um, oh, I wasn't able to take that fight on 10 days. They called me on the 10th. So was, they called me, offered me that fight before before they offered it to Usman. They offered it to me. So it would have been me. It could have could have easily been me. But um, I'll t- we can talk about that story later. But to uh, finish the question, man, um, I don't think... No, you didn't do anything to deserve to deserve a middleweight title. They're only doing it for uh, for pay per views, for the entertainment aspect, because that's what uh, that's what the populace likes. That's what they eat up. You know, I guess um, when you're dealing with a bunch of morons, all they want to do is see clowns joke around, dance around, and, and do all c- kinds of craziness. But um, like I said, you know, I'm here to fight, and that's what I bring to the table. I'm not finna sit here and 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 bark and scream on a microphone, and then you know um, 
and that's it, you know, and try to and try to bank off of that, you know. So um, that's what the UFC wants. That's what the world wants. If Shamaj is doing his thing. I'm not saying he's a clown. He's doing his fucking thing. The dude's an animal. I'm not going to take anything away from any of the competitors. Um, but it's a crazy world we live in, man. Okay. And uh, I'm sitting right here, ready to break some more records, ready to break some more heads. As soon as this knee gets ready, I'm going to be doing it again. So uh, they can only they can only uh, avoid eye contact with me for so mm. long. You know, you know when you see a big when you see a fucking thing walk in the thing in the room and you don't want to make eye contact with it. What does that say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so 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 so, so nobody's running around here saying, "Hey, Cannoneer is in there." I've only heard a few people say Cannoneer. Only the real martial artists, the real people, will acknowledge me. Like Rogan, I've heard him acknowledge me, and there's a few others who will acknowledge me. Um, because they're aware of the they're aware of their surroundings and they see what's going on around here. They're not taken by the lights and the gl- and the glamour of this whole machine that's that's you know that's trucking along. So, mm-hmm. dude, spewing. So it it's the knee. What, what what happened? Tell tell us the story. What what happened? What was the injury? And um, how did it all play out? Because man, <laughs> it must have been hard watching that fight, right? N- being like, fuck, that should have been me in there, right? it was it wasn't it was yeah i cringed a little bit watching that fight yeah but um it was uh october 10th i'm on my way to practice i pull up to the to the mma lab get ready to do um some grappling practice tuesday but and as i'm pulling in to get ready to get out i get a call from my manager they're saying hey cost us out they they're ready to uh they're offering you the, the opportunity to come in and you win, you get the title fight, which is what I've, which has been my stance from the start, mm. right? When they asked me after I uh, broke that record in June, will you fight Hamza to welcome him in the division? I'm like, no, not to welcome him in the division. I'll fight him for my title shot. Mm. He's not a middleweight. He's not a ranked middleweight. He doesn't get me to the title shot. That's why I just got through fighting the number three middleweight in Marvin Vittori. Now, if you ask me, would you fight him for a title shot? Hell yeah, I'll fight him for a title shot. And that's what I said in that interview. So finally, 10 days before the fight, they give me the call 11 days, 10, 11 days before, you know, the fight, they give me the call and say, OK, we'll give you a title shot. And um, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But, but let me go in here and discuss this with my coaches like we always do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll call you back with a, a emphatical yes. But um, <clears throat> not 40 minutes into practice, we're working. Um, I get hit with a mat return, dude. I, I'm getting up. We're working get ups and stuff. So I'm get, of course we're working get ups, right? Cause yeah. I'm not expecting to not get taken down by Kamza. I'm expecting that this guy's gonna be able to take me down, but is he gonna be able to keep me down? Mm-hmm. And the answer in my mind is always no. They're not. They're never able to keep me down, and he ain't no different. So um, <clears throat> that's what was working get ups, and I got up. I got hit with a mat return. Um. And when I hit the mat, uh, I hit the mat in the way to where my hit my left hip and my right foot hit the mat at the same time. And just the downward force of of uh, me hitting the ground in that manner went right to my MCL, tore the MCL, um, got the MRI, verified it. Uh, so I couldn't, you know, so this opportunity you had to slip, had slip me by not, not only an hour after receiving the opportunity, does it slip through my, you know, does it, you know, slipped through my hands in that manner. So, um, yeah, did the MRI. I'm scheduled to have surgery on it this Thursday, actually. So uh, the fight in December is not going to happen. Um, oh, man. And the UFC knows this. I've already told they, they they already know. We're working on getting the insurance and all that stuff done. So I guess this is the uh, uh, official thing. And um, uh official official breaking news if there's ever been breaking news with my name in it (laughs) (laughs) um but there could have been this past weekend there would have been there would have been for sure but um that's life man that's where that's where i'm at i'm not even as mad about the injury injuries happen in this sport it's just the timing of it man that's what hurts Mm. most about it you know but um i'm not gonna sit here and try to hang on to this moment and wish i could have and wish i would have um Focus on recovery. Focus on what I can get better. So I'm, when I come back, you can you better believe I'm gonna be more swole. I've already been swole. I'm already big, but I'm it's gonna be upper body. 
You know what I mean? It's going to be the left leg, I guess. It's Getting like, bigger, Jared? Right Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Save some muscles so, for the rest of us, my God. Yeah, I need muscles over here. <laughs> no, man. Hell no. I'm taking what I can get. So if you, you guys get out there and work for it, you take, you, you know, you can pull, pull from that, uh, <laughs> From that pool, man, but yeah. I'm getting what I can get right now. When I get back, it's going to be devastating for each and every one of them. Mm. Well, Jared, I was going to say, first of all, dude, we're so sorry, man. Um, w- what a horrible thing to happen. And we know how hard you work for it. For the fans that don't know, you were in Sydney. You, when is the backup? And I remember, like, you know, you waited and you did the whole thing. We were, you've, you've done, you've waited on as backups previously. Like, we've seen you do it. Like, you put your heart and soul into it. And um, we know how much you want this. So it's absolutely heartbreaking, heartbreaking to see you not make that fight and also fight in December. Do you know what your timeline looks like for a return, though? Because I guess the only silver lining here is, you know, Drickus is looking for a fight. And I guess potentially him versus you is maybe a clearer path to the title than you fighting Roman. Well, I doubt that's going to happen because I probably won't be fighting again for another five months is what oh, the doctor man. told me. Um, so I'll, I'll be 40 by the time, by the time I uh, fight again, which is a, which is a milestone for me. But you look it's 21, a, you look 21. So it doesn't know, right? even <laughs> I mean, everybody's going to be like, oh, he's 40 now. We, his age is age. I'm like, your <laughs> age, not my age, your age. When yeah. you turn 40, you can shrivel up into a, into a, into an old mess and die. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm still ascending. I'm still getting better, still getting stronger. So, um, that's what it's going to be for the foreseeable future. Damn, man. It'll be it'll be very interesting to see the landscape uh, when you come back. Who do you think will be the champion by the time you come back? Uh, Sean? Sean. You reckon, you reckon he defends yeah. against uh, Hamzat? Huh? You think he defends against Hamzat? If Hamzat doesn't finish him in the first round, nope. Mm. So, um... I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Shit. Shit, man. Did you see him in that first round? Damn. Oh, yeah. No the one dude, does that to Usman. Yeah. But that's... The dude that, lived up to his name. He lived up to all the shit he's been talking. You know what I mean? Mm. In that first round. You know, and then he hurt his hand. And, uh, yeah. You know, I'm not... I, I don't want to say too much. I, I, don't, I don't like giving my opinion on other people. You know? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's some trifling trivial shit to do you know what i mean yeah. unless they're doing something bad you know if they're doing something wrong then yeah yeah we need to we need to address that but all i see him him, him doing his thing he's he's training as hard as he can he's fighting whoever he can he's got luck on his side he's got the ufc on his side he's got the whole muslim world on his side <laughs> so um good for him man shit you can't hate the man for having for being blessed the way he is, who knows, you know, so shit, um, good on him. If he gets a title fight, fucking bless, more blessings to you, man. I wish you 20 fat, happy, 20 fat cows and a happy wife and children and shit. <laughs> but, um, but I want that too. You know what I mean? So when we meet, when we meet, you know, all that, all that talking is irrelevant for me. All that, all the bravado is irrelevant to me. You know, you're going to have to do or die. And when I, you know, and that's what it is with me. So uh, he's a doer. The dude's a doer. So I'm looking forward to that fight. I love that. That's what I want. Somebody who's going to come and get it. You know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, let's do it. Now that now that he's a contender, you know what I mean? I guess. Mm. But whatever, man, whatever. Um, Again, that's him. Like I said, good on him. My job is to focus on me. And uh as far as when I come back, I'm going to be gunning for that title. You know what I mean? Uh, probably have to fight one or two people to get back to it, but I'll be gunning for the top. If I can't get to the top, I'm looking for that contender. If they don't want to give me that contender, then if y'all want to, you know, if I look at you and you turn your head down to the side and look away, I'm going to start pointing my finger at you and calling you a bitch. You know what I mean? So uh, let's go. Wait until I get back. Oh, dude, I, I can't wait till you come back. You'll be, you'll be a brand new man. Uh, speaking of being a brand new man, and just super, super quickly, urgent message for you guys. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the brand that took your balls to space, is now launching them into the ultrasphere, introducing the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It's a big day. 
gentlemen, featuring the new cutting edge design and next generation dual skin safe blade heads for different shades. It's pretty much a spaceship to take your boys downstairs, but to the next level. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the brand new Lawnmower 5.0. You can get 20% off that bad boy with the code submission. I'm one of the lucky ones to be one of the first people to try the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. And let's just say it's a game changer, man. I'm just like swishing through town with the smooth, smoothest <laughs> balls, smoothest sack on the colder sack, man. The, fi- the fifth generation trimmer features two next gen interchangeable skin safe blade heads, a standard trimmer blade for taking a little off the top, you know, just a smidge, and then a new foil blade to go for that smooth finish wherever your heart desires. No more wet shaving down there. Count me in. The bad boy also features two dual LED spotlights to provide the utmost of vision when you're, you know, getting to work down there. Uh, We're talking three length setting combos for all your desired lengths. Oh, and by the way, it is waterproof as has become standard for all fantastic Manscaped products. It's a win, win, win for everybody. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. It's the five time, five time, five time, five time, five time. (laughs) Manscaped lawnmower. Don't don't miss out on it, man. Code word submission, 20% off and free shipping. Can you dig it, sucker? (laughs) Also, just quickly, guys, uh, we got the Rugby World Cup. Uh, 2023, baby, the the end, the big end to the Rugby World Cups this weekend. It's Sunday morning. And uh, if you're going to go watch it, you want to find out, all right, what, what venue is going to be showing it. And you want to find a primo venue. Fans are, our good friends at Fans are the best venue finder and free, by the way. The best in the world is, uh, has got you covered. All you do, jump on the Fans app, nice and free. You jump on and it shows your, uh, all the venues near your location. You pick anyone. Let's go the Duke of Wellington Hotel for argument's sake and see what's going on in the Duke. 17 screens serves food. Ooh. I like the screens, but it doesn't say anything else. What about the Crafty Squire? Let's see what's happening in the Crafty Squire. Mm. One screen. I don't think so, pal. Windsor Ale House. We've, we've checked this one a million times, I think. Uh, six screens, commentary, serves food, Wi-Fi, garden, projector. See, and just like that, you would go to the Windsor Ale House as opposed to the other ones. Or maybe, maybe you're going to go to the Hawthorne Hotel. Let's have a look. 13 screens, commentary, serves food, Wi-Fi, garden, pet-friendly projector, outdoor screen. <laughs> Might drop. There it is right there. The... Uh, <laughs> The Hawthorne Hotel. So that's 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 what you get with fans. The ultimate venue find, isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. It's good for those niche sports as well, like your NFL games, your soccer games, uh, the Rugby World Cup, things that you're not quite sure are going to be played across niche the Niche in Australia. Around. People in America are like, NFL niche? What are you talking about? Yeah, I know. I know. They're like, what? Yeah, NBA? What's that? Oh, it's this little Australian thing we watch. But over here, it's hard to get those sports, yeah. and the guys want to – Check it out with their mates. Hard to get a pub that shows them. And fans, it really is the ultimate venue finder. Click the link in the description below and start searching for your favorite sports so you and your mates can grab a beer out of the house, get a little break from the missus and the famo, and uh, have a few beers away from everyone. <laughs> Try and enjoy it in, an, in a nice venue. Uh, fans, it really has you sorted, Cass. That's right. Be like Mayor Quimby. Uh, avoid time with the uh, wife. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Jared, just, just going back to you, man. Um, and I know this might be a little bit too early to even think about uh, – given the, the injury and how fresh it is. But w- like, what has the UFC been saying? What's their reaction response been? And have they given you any indicators at all on like your trajectory whenever you do uh, come back? No, they haven't said anything about it. Um, I would hope that my standing is still in play because I know it was, it was they were scrambling trying to find somebody to, to take this fight. And uh, there may have been some, uh, some uh, what's the word? Some disagreement. What's well, not disagreement? Some uh, questioning as to the legitimacy of my injury. Oh, wow. um, by but the I, UFC. You know, I showed them, I showed, yeah, I showed them the proof. I guess. I, I guess people would naturally think, oh, you don't want to take the fight. You also you're injured all of a sudden since we offered you this fight with Kamzat. But uh, no, 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 that's not me. No, never that. That's not what I'm here for. That's not who I am. Mm. So. Um, I also I imagine, like, anyone who would have taken that opportunity would have gotten yeah. and paid, you know what? man, would have and, gotten and paid. You know no one would turn that down. Yeah, no way. You know no, and you know what? You know what I mean? I wasn't even I wasn't even saying, you're going to have to pay me a million dollars to fight him. Mm. You know what I mean? I've, I've stuck to my stance from the start. Give me the title shot for this fool, mm. and that's it. It's that simple, because that's what I deserve. That's where I'm at right now. If that's where you say he is, then let's do the thing. That's what I've always, that's always been my thing. Um... I hate that it had had to happen 10 days before. I hate even more that I had to become injured 
getting ready for this thing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Um, but I forgot the point I was trying to make. <laughs> mm. No, but you know what, dude? Like, and by the way, if the UFC ever questions any injuries, just be like, "Hey, oh, but go go watch go watch that Robert Whitaker yeah. fight again, and watch my arm snap and me fight all the way through." Jared Kennedy well, yeah, doesn't come up with any injuries. <laughs> yeah, that's not the only UFC fight that I've had with an injury. I broke my mm. hand when I was in light heavyweight mm. and finished that fight. You mm. know what I mean? When I fought Robert Whitaker, I was getting ready to finish that fight too. So, um, yeah. Uh, Nobody wants to fight injured, you know? And on 10 days notice, this isn't the type of injury I'm going to go into that fight with. Fly all the way over to his side of the world with this injury and um, let this dude try to wrestle me up like that? No, that's not smart. Not, mm. not, not for my career, not for my body, not for my health. So, you know, uh, as hard as it was, I had to pull out of that fight. As hard as it's going to be, I may have to pull out of this next fight with Deletsi. Um, where does that put me when I come back? I don't know, man. Hopefully, I don't have to uh, be the the, uh, the second or third choice to fight these top guys because I'm here to hurt people. I just broke a record. I'm only getting better at doing that. I'm building on that. So please hear me when I say this, Mick, Dana, Hunter. And so all these fighters, you know, you know, I know you guys want the entertainment aspect, but the pain I'm going to implement <laughs> mm -hmm. when in my fights is going to be satiation enough for the crowd. It's going to be enough to draw the attention of that. It's going to it's going to spark that primal thing in people. That's not going to go away. That's not going to be trivial. It's going to be real. Let's get some real entertainment in here, not this sports entertainment bullshit that we're trying to go along with. I know we've just shook, we know we're shaking hands with the WWE, <laughs> but um, come on, this is combat. Dana, you know, I know you, you know, you know combat, you know how to promote some fights. Let's promote some fights, let's not promote a circus, you know what I mean? Mm. So um, forget everybody's feelings, you know. Um, I know Dana doesn't like to play into this political thing, so it's the fight, man. This, I'm the one you want. <laughs> I'm the one you want. So I'm ready to be champ. When I get back, I'm going to start collecting heads, just like Khabib did until you until I'm undeniable, you know what I mean? Khabib wasn't doing all that talking. Khabib was just smashing people. And then people started saying, ooh, smash, smash. Oh, yeah, he's smashing. Then people started saying smash and now everybody wants to be a smasher and now and now the UFC is, is all up in Dagestan, Russia and all over there. You know what I mean? Mm. Seeing these guys flood the UFC. So so yeah man. Uh I'm not gonna I'm not here to say that I'm gonna be the next cash cow because that that is not what I'm here to be, man. I am not here to get milked by no damn body. <laughs> um but we can shake hands. You know what I mean? We can shake hands and make come to an agreement. And when I'm the champion, we can do some big business. Let's go. Yeah, well, dude, you are one of the as you're as real as they come, and uh, we can't wait to see what's next year for your return. Look, the only silver lining is, you know, there's some big names flying around. Maybe a Robert, Robert Whitaker rematch. Maybe Drickus, if he doesn't have the next opponent. Whoever it's going to be, it's going to be a high profile fight that hopefully gets you to that title shot. And of course, you know, the rematch with the champ. Um, we all know you have the history with him as well. So. No doubt about it. Big things when you come back. We wish you a speedy recovery. And thank you so much for joining us, man. Really means a lot uh, to us to have you join us here today. Uh, guys, make sure to follow Jared on his uh, career back. I mean, on his journey back to the ring, of course, on social media. And, uh, dude, we can't wait. I know I know you say that uh, people might not see you, you know, as, you know, the big entertainment thing. But I know there's a lot of fans out there that can't wait to see you back in there that want to see you get that title shot, man. So I know they're excited after hearing the interview to hear how excited you are to get that opportunity. Thank you so much, man. Thanks so much for joining us on the program. Thank you guys for having me. And to all you fans that are entertained by what I bring and you know what I mean, and respect what I do, I appreciate all of you tremendously. And uh, I'm going to keep doing it. And um, I'll see you guys at the fights. 100%. Thanks so much, Joe. I appreciate it, man. Speedy recovery. Lots of love, man. Thank you, guys.